Where is the wealthiest place in the world? It's not China, it's not Dubai. It's the graveyard. Because in the graveyard, you will find inventions never invented. Business is never erected. Songs never sung, books never written, ideas never nurtured, people never realized. But you wanna know something else? You're not in the graveyard, yet. We get one life, and every passing moment, we will never get back again. The problem is, you think you have time. Stop wasting your life. How many hours a day you waste, or how many hours a week you waste, and the classic answer is something like four to six hours a day. You know, inefficient studying, uh, watching things on YouTube that not only do you not want to watch, that you don't even care about, that make you feel horrible about watching after you're done. That's probably four hours right there. You know, you think, well, that's 20, 25 hours a week. It's 100 hours a month. That's two and a half full work weeks. It's half a year of work weeks per year. And if your time is worth $20 an hour, which is a radical underestimate, it's probably more like 50 if you think about it in terms of deferred wages. If you're wasting 20 hours a week, you're wasting $50,000 a year, and you are doing that right now, and it's because you're young, wasting $50,000 a year is a way bigger catastrophe than it would be for me to waste it because I'm not going to last nearly as long. And so if your life isn't everything it could be, you could ask yourself, well, what would happen if you just stop wasting the opportunities that are in front of you? You gotta be very intentional and deliberate. The stuff that you're dreaming about, the stuff that you want to happen, it's not gonna happen by osmosis. Like, you gotta get up and you gotta go after it. And what the devil wants you to do, what the enemy wants you to do is get distracted and focus on stuff you shouldn't be just focusing on. He wants you to stay in bed. What he would love to do is for you to waste these next two or three weeks. People spend time waiting for when the time is gonna be right. They're waiting for the pieces to fall into place. They're waiting for the planets to align. They're waiting for everything to be all set. It's not gonna happen. You wanna know when the time is right? The time is right now. All you have to do to kill procrastination is just start. More active and commendable still is the person who is waiting for the daylight and intercepts the first rays of the sun. Shame on him who lies in bed dozing when the sun is high in the sky, whose waking hours commence in the middle of the day. You have to dedicate every breath, every ounce of energy, and every thought and effort that you possibly have in your heart to becoming what it is you want to be. Because nothing great comes from a position of comfort. Everything worthwhile. Everything that is great comes from being in a position of uncomfortable. Nothing worthwhile is easy to get. Everything's going to make you uncomfortable. Get f***ing used to it. And if you can get used to being uncomfortable, your f***ing limits are non-existent. Everything strives to become all it can possibly be. And that striving to become is what discipline is all about. Disciplining ourselves to fulfill our natural potential to become all that we can be. And finally, discipline attracts opportunity. Opportunity is always looking for ambition and skill in action. Discipline taps the unlimited power of commitment. The human will in action, driven by inspiration, enticed by desire, tempered by reason, guided by intelligence can bring you to that high and lofty place called the good life. Discipline, those unique steps of intelligent thought and activity that put a lid on temper and a faucet on courtesy, that develop positive and control negative, that encourage success and deter failure, that design lifestyle and control frustration, that enhance health and curb sickness, that promote happiness and manage sadness. Discipline, the start and the continuing process that brings all good things. And remember, anyone can start the process. It's not if I could, I would. It's if I would, I could. If I will, I can. So start the new process. You can begin a new habit no matter how small it is. Small isn't important. Whether or not you start and whether or not you continue are all that is important.
And don't be deluded by an affirmation. Only affirm what you are truly prepared to do. Many of us delude ourselves with our words into believing that we're making changes and making progress when in fact our daily activity is taking us in the exact opposite direction of our affirmation. Why would you walk in the opposite direction of your dreams? The man dreams of wealth and walks daily towards certain financial disaster. The man wishes for happiness and thinks the thoughts and commits the acts that take him to certain despair. So to have a prosperous life, start a prosperity plan. To become wealthy, start a wealth plan. Remember, you don't have to be wealthy to have a wealth plan. A person with no means can have a rich plan. If you are ill, start a health plan. If you don't have energy, start an energy plan. If you don't feel good, start a feel good plan. If you're not smart, start a smart plan. If you can't, start a can plan. If you haven't, start a have plan. Anyone can. Even a bad person can start hearing good messages and reading good books. Recognize that the start of the better life, the happy life, the wealthy life is today. This is exciting. Both the process and the result can begin today. Start the new journey today. If you think of a new idea, today is the day to begin the discipline of putting that idea into action. Set this day up as a long, busy, exciting start for your new life. Get your first book for your new library today. Begin your new practice of setting goals today. Start clearing out a drawer of your new orderly desk today. Start eating an apple a day on your new health plan today. Put some money in your new investment for fortune account today. Start reading with intensity for your new wealth of mind plan today. Write a postponed letter today. Make a delayed telephone call today. Pick up your camera and take a picture of something to start your new treasury of photographs today. Get some momentum going on your new commitment to the better life. See how many activities you can pile on in this first day. Go all out. Break away from the negative downward pull of gravity. Start the thrusters going. Prove to yourself that waiting is over. Hoping is past, and that faith and action have now taken charge. It's a new day, a new beginning for your new life. With discipline, you can't believe the list of positive moves you can make in the first day of your new beginning. What have you got to lose? Only the despair and fear and guilt of the past. Only the dissatisfaction and unhappiness and lack of fulfillment of the past. Only the frustration and low self-esteem of the past. Don't let yourself forget how many doctors have died furrowing their brows over how many deathbeds. How many astrologers after pompous forecasts about others' ends. How many philosophers after endless disquisitions on death and immortality. How many warriors after inflicting thousands of casualties themselves. How many tyrants, after abusing the power of life and death atrociously, as if they were themselves immortal, how many whole cities have met their end? Haile, Pompeii, Herculaneum, and countless others. And all the ones you know yourself, one after another. One who laid out another for burial and was buried himself and then the man who buried him all in the same short space of time. In short, know this. Human lives are brief and trivial. Yesterday, a blob of semen. Tomorrow, embalming fluid, ash. To pass through this brief life as nature demands. To give it up without complaint. Like an olive that ripens and falls. Praising its mother thanking the tree it grew on. If you do the task before you always adhering to strict reason with zeal and energy and yet with humanity, disregarding all lesser ends and keeping the divinity within you pure and upright as though you were even now faced with its recall, if you hold steadily to this, staying for nothing and shrinking from nothing, only seeking in each passing action a conformity with nature and in each word and utterance, a fearless truthfulness. Then the good life shall be yours. 
And from this course, no man has the power to hold you back. Soon you'll be ashes or bones, a mere name at most. And even that is just a sound, an echo. The things we want in life are empty, stale and trivial. Dogs snarling at each other, quarreling children, laughing and then bursting into tears a moment later. Trust, shame, justice, truth, gone from the earth and only found in heaven. Why are you still here? Sensory objects are shifting and unstable. Our senses dim and easily deceived. The soul itself, a decoction of the blood, fame in a world like this is worthless. And so, wait for it patiently, annihilation or metamorphosis. And until that time comes, what? Honor and revere the gods. Treat human beings as they deserve. Be tolerant with others and strict with yourself. Remember, nothing belongs to you but your flesh and blood, and nothing else is under your control.